Kamusta, fancy seeing you here. It is another day of eating in Auckland, but this time we're gonna be hitting up a couple of South American and Brazilian spots. Pretty excited, we're gonna hit up Melenta, which is a more modern South American restaurant. And then we're gonna take it all the way up to the shore with the Brazilian cafe. And then, first time having acai. Anyway, without further ado, let's go. First spot, Milenta. Honestly, the first time we went here, we were absolutely blown away. The concept is basically South American food and every inch, every ingredient has been touched by their open flame kitchen, which is such a beauty to see one of the chefs. Kababayan. The you know, and it chef. actually shows through the menu because we're gonna get it. They've got pork belly adobo, pinchos, you already know. It is an alfresco spot, they've got, but they've got plenty of heaters. Let's see. Nothing like ending the work day with a cheeky margarita. I got their melenta margarita. Comes with tequila, maraschino, plum, lime, agave, and vanilla bean. Oh! <laughs> that is dangerous. <laughs> top tier margarita I've ever had. I can taste like the vanilla a little bit. <laughs> and then I got the Melenta Sour, which comes with mezcal, apricot liqueur, lime, egg, white, agave, blackberry jam. You know, nice and pink. You know, pink in a girl's color. A real man wouldn't care. <laughs> He's, he's a cocktail guy, you know? He's not afraid to enjoy a good old cocktail. You know, no, this is my gripe with beers though. Not only is it lower in alcohol and tastes worse, but it also bloats you. Where is this Sigma cocktail? Higher, I mean, I'm sure it's not a higher alcohol percentage, but it's got the hard liquor in it, and it tastes nicer, and it's prettier. Period. The food has arrived. We got a couple, a few oysters that have green apple and jalapeno. You know, I love me some oysters with a little spritz of lemon. Let's dig in. Okay, let me just wiggle it around. <laughs> what happened there? Some of that apple went up my throat, but that's good. But that was really fresh, really clean tasting. Okay, round two, no choking. Mm, I just love that greenish taste. The green apple, very fresh. Next raw dish, we have the venison tar tar. I've been in a bit of a tar tia um, phase recently, well, pretty egg yolk. Oh, yeah. Venison tartar. I've never had tartar with venison before, but it has a honey cured egg yolk, leeks, taro chip. I think that's uh, mixed enough for me. Chippy chip moment. Oh, yeah. There's a lot going on in this tartar, and I'm not mad about it. Like the meat, it's like kind of slightly melts in your mouth. You can taste a bit of the pepper, a little bit smoky. This is absolutely fire food right here, right now. The lovely Chef Al decided to give us a bonus dish of their king fish tiradito. It has coconut leche de tigre, pickled carrot, squid ink oil, and finger lime. Just look at it. It's a thing of beauty. I feel bad just ruining it. Do it. Do it. Oh yeah, you see that beetroot cured exterior? Uh huh. Finger line, a little bit of everything. You can definitely taste the coconut in there, but it doesn't overpower the kingfish. Real good. And they don't skimp on the slices. Like these are pretty good slices as well. They're not thin as a paper. This is where it gets interesting. Let's do the empanada first, which is a chicken and leek empanada with Tia's ahi. This is the ahi right there, and that looks jam-packed with herbs and onions. But first, let's split it 
it open. Oh, that looks... Yes, sir. I don't think there's any cream, but it has that kind of vibe. The chicken is tender. The leeks providing that uh, subtle sweetness. But let's try it with the ahi. You know, there. I would like quite a lot of it. The perfect acidity to cut through the pastry and the creamy, not creamy chicken really well. Amazing. I see adobo, automatic winner. Under the candlelight, under the candlelight, you know? Look at that. Mm. <laughs> Reminds me of the barbecue back home. That is so plump pinoy. The pork belly is insanely tender. That is amazing. But you cannot ignore the achara on the side. Achara is our native Filipino pickled papaya. It's got like a sweet-ish glaze going on and I just love how the achara cuts through that fatty smokiness. Final savory stretch. We got a beast. We got the lamb neck. Uh, it's already uh, torn apart, but let's just pretend that that's, we're doing it for the first time again. Oh my god, the juicy, the smoke, the tenderness. No joke though, I wasn't exaggerating. That was actually my reaction because it looked absolutely insane and flaky. It comes with spiced braised lentils, mint, farofa, and oregano. I can't. At the slightest touch, it disintegrates into just these meaty, fatty strands. But I got some spiced lentils in there as well. Are you okay? Shambolic, bruv. Absolutely shambolic. Absolutely tender. It's like Albert Einstein turned his genius into the grill and cooked up that lamb neck. And the lentils are just lovely. This is what New Zealand lamb is all about. He gave us extra sauce because he he's, he's a G. But one more. One right. more? Is it really? Two more, three more, maybe seven. Is it a Vin Diesel one more? One last ride, eight more times. Okay, it's dessert time, folks, because unfortunately good things do have to come to an end. We have a natilla slice. I believe it's a very common dessert in Colombia. It comes with a little sauce moment, kind of looked like it uh, peed itself, me when I have to public speak. Um, uh, there's actually, like, you can see the vanilla bean specks throughout, but oh my gosh. It's thick. I guess we'll find out. It looks so smooth and creamy. Mm. It's so creamy, like custardy, but it's not dense. And the sauce is like a vanilla y, lemon y sauce. So it actually complements it really well by adding a bit of a, like, kind of tartness, but it's not too much. I love this. You know, I love like milky, creamy things. And this is just like the perfect dessert to end with, in my opinion. of a hidden gem because like the first time we went here we were like where is it why are we in a tennis center this is the brazilian cafe home of one of the best like one of the best brazilian food places in Auckland. the brazilian music was just on i am so excited it is saturday and that only means one thing as well feijoada saturday I'm so excited are you excited yambi yes yes let's see it is 12 55 ripe time for day drinking and what better way to start off then with Caipirinha, Brazil's national cocktail, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the tang is tanging. That is so nice, bright and refreshing. I love this. I got Guarana and Tartica. It's like a popular fizzy drink. I've actually had it 
it before. It's good. It has like this cherry taste, like cherry combined with Mountain Dew. Okay, so our starters and sides have arrived. Okay, let's start with this cashinha. It's shaped like a teardrop. It's like this fried perfection of dough. It's filled with chicken. Okay, let's see if I can oh, cut this. I am. Cut this perfectly in half. It's oak, oak. Sorry, I just like that was a bit messy. But look at that! It's filled with ch shredded chicken. I'm gonna add some of their chili mayonnaise right there, and they also have like some extra chili sauce. And I know it's gonna be good, so I'm gonna add it on. Hopefully, not too hot. Okay, this is gonna be hot. on the outside and the dough ever so slightly chewy it has this mashed potato kind of texture and then you got the inside chicken had like a little bit of spice which is nice and the creamy cream cheese kind of counteract all that stuff mm. okay our last starter which i'm probably the most excited about this is their the dina de tapioca it's cubes of tapioca and halloumi deep fried and just look at it it looks so good mm. what a unique item i've never had something like this before there's like a chili bacon jam on the outside so there's a slight sweetness to it a little bit crunchy a little bit chewy and bouncy because of the tapioca Okay, the mains have arrived and my dish is looking mighty beautiful. I got their Vatapa de Norte. Basically, it's this coconut stew with prawns and red peppers and chilies. And it's also topped with dende oil, which is like, it's starting to mix in, but like this red, see that? That's the dende oil. I will actually try it on its own first, but it looks really hot. Ugh, hopefully I don't burn my tongue. <laughs> That's like creamy, a little bit peppery, and the dende oil. I don't even know how to describe the flavor, but it's just like kind of nutty, kind of smoky. You know, this consistency is too good to not have with some rice. Just look at that beautiful color. Oh yeah. That soaks it up perfectly. Chase it with a prawn. Hot, hot. The prawn is just like the perfect protein to have with it because it has this slight seafood sweetness, but it doesn't overpower the bottom up, you know? That's great. I love that. So comforting. I already said it's Saturday, and Saturday can only mean one thing beijoada. Honestly, it is a classic Brazilian dish for a region and one of my favorites. Just the, just the almost purpley hue stew from the beans. It's a beef and pork stew with all manner of hunky sausages, pork, beef, and of course beans. And no feijoada experience is complete without the acutumum, the sides. You got the orange, I think this is kale, the farofa, which is the cassava flour crumb stuff. I don't know what they call it in Brazil, chicharro, something like that, crispy pork, and of course, rice you had me. Pour it into the, uh, yes, maybe some old. Crush that into the rice, mix that in a little bit. Some farro. I already knew that was gonna be good. That's, we had this the last time. Chase it with some crispy crackling. It is quite literally like the epitome of comfort food. Thick and voluptuous, like a Miami BBL. So you quite literally cannot go wrong. Okay, this looks like a hunky piece of meat. Oh, full apart, super tender. And I just love all these sides that you get, the little kale. The whole Brazilian community is out here. I can hear like Portuguese everywhere. Like every table, Portuguese. That's how you know it's a real, real local favorite. Okay, we're ending this meal not inside, but outside where the tennis courts lie with dessert. 
And look, they put a little note. Thanks, Patricia. She's the owner who we were chatting to. And she's so sweet. He got some Pujim or Flan. Oh, as you know, like most cultures will have their version of Flan. You know, the Filipinos, we got the Leche Flan. And the Brazilians got the Pujim. I just love the name. It's so cute. Pujim. But yeah, as you can see, like this is a hunky hunky boy. It's got the caramel. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. Tastes just like a leche flan, but the texture is a bit more um eggy, but it's not super heavy and dense. And the perfect balance of sweet and creamy. Mmm. Mm, mm. That is good. Obrigado. Acai is a berry. Oh, it has a kind of a, an um, unusual shape. That's me doing the job there in Amazon. I've been importing acai to New Zealand. You can see I didn't have grey hair. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the production of the acai. Oh. It's how it's, what do we eat? Because we don't eat the acai as it is. Yeah. So we, what do we eat is actually the skin. Yeah. I decided to open the shop because I kind of uh, trying to convince people to get into to get acai into the menu because we can do this, we can talk, we yeah, can educate yeah. people, and uh, we can have acai. Let's have a ball. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Unfortunately, the weather is not too much in our favor, but it's okay. We're gonna persevere. Look at these gorgeous, gorgeous acai bowls. I've never had this before. I got mine with condensed milk. Apparently, it's um, like in certain regions in Brazil, like you might not like having it with condensed milk, but some people do. I know Pablo, like he personally doesn't like it, but I love condensed milk, so I added one. It comes with coconut and bananas, and then I added on chia seeds and goji berries as well a little scoop of that mm -hmm. oh the rain's getting worse oh well mm. oh obviously i've never had it before so in my head i was just expecting like something that would taste similar to like a raspberry or a strawberry or, or a blueberry at most but it's a bit more mellow. Just something about it that is just different. And the granola is really nice as well. Like they make their own granola. A little unique twist to it. Mmm. I actually gotta try to scoop some like condensed milk up. Eh. Okay. I feel like that. Oh. <laughs> I don't think I picked up any. Mm. You know, condensed milk adds a nice like milky sweetness, which I love with any kind of sweet. And most importantly, healthy. Mm. For my one, I just said Pablo take the wheel, so I got a passion fruit, peanut butter, well, also with goji berries, coconut, um, chia seeds, and banana. Banana! <laughs> no. <laughs> you like that, uh, middle-aged moms? You and your Midian obsession? This is so risky. There. There. Okay. Mmm. It almost has a savory quality to it, which is quite nice. Let me get some of the passion fruit as well. You know? Ooh. That is good. The tart, sour brightness that passion fruit imparts is so beautiful. And just all the textures from the banana, the chia seeds, the coconut. Where's the peanut butter? Yum. 
That is a pretty good combo. I think the peanut butter gives it a more earthy, nutty, rich tone to this kind of like bright berry acidic bowl. Here at Pablo, it's really nice to see like where the berries come from, what the significance it is to Brazilian cuisine and culture. You know, he grew up eating it, which is quite nice. So Yambi, question for you. See you at 4 a.m. Run Club tomorrow? I see work there. tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, we're feeling real healthy, real energized. But Melenta, the Brazilian cafe, and now Pablo's Acai. Shout out Solid to them. Solid food. Until the next video. So yeah, thank you guys for watching another one of our food and travel vlogs live from very, very rainy Auckland underneath the Auckland Harbor Bridge. And see you in the next one. Say bye, Wonga. Bye.